What's up everybody, welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today I'm gonna actually talk about my tattoos, which are my newer tattoos. So I have a video up um, from some of my older tattoos, like the flames on my arms, my bulldog, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I started getting heavily tattooed at the end of, let's see, it was the end of 2013 or beginning of 2014. I decided I was done competing and bodybuilding and I had actually held off on getting the sleeves and stuff. Some of you guys that have been watching the channel know the story, but this is a little uh, kind of recap. I didn't want to get the sleeves while I was competing because it actually covers muscularity. Like you can't really see the muscles as well as you, you know, you could if there's actually, you can see it, like in the right lighting, you can see them, but it's not the same thing. So when I was finally done competing in bodybuilding, I decided, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to go ahead and get sleeved. I started out with um, this sleeve, but before I went for the sleeves, I actually went and got, <clears throat> see, so I had Bruno's paw done, Nico's paw. I think the next one was uh, unbroken. So you can see it right here on my arm, it says unbroken. And on here it says loyalty. Okay, so when you put them together, it says unbroken loyalty. Now, what that was, was I actually tore my rotator cuff. I was in the doctor's office. They were telling me what was going on. And I knew that if I had asked her for painkillers like Vicodin or Oxycontin, I would have got it. That's how bad the pain was. And I had to look at the doctor and tell her that I was allergic to painkillers. And Carrie was with me at the time. And she just kind of looked like, what the fuck? And the doctor was like, okay. She got the idea, the fact that I couldn't have them. When I left there, I told her, I said, you know what? I remain unbroken. You know, I remain loyal to my sobriety and, and my addiction. And I'm unbroken, unbroken loyalty. And I was like, wow, it makes a good tattoo. So that's what that tattoo represents. I am unbroken in my sobriety and I remain loyal to my sobriety. Unbroken loyalty. Now, after that one, I... Um, I got, let's see, I think it was the next one was here, I got this cross. So I already had this little uh, tribal do hickey here, which really was just kind of like a fucking stupid tattoo that I got when I was younger. And I didn't want to cover anything up. So what I did was I got the cross added for my grandmother. So when I was getting the cross added, I asked the tattoo artist if anybody did Polynesian tattooing there. And he's like, yeah, I do it. I said, cool, I want to do sleeves, etc. He said, when do you want to get started? I said, today. And he was like, look, we got to... <clears throat> excuse me, he's like, we gotta make the stencil and stuff, he's like, how about like next week? So what we did was he, he kind of took the stencil on my shoulder and he made this piece on my shoulder. Now, I asked him, you know, I, I didn't know um, a whole lot about traditional and non-traditional Polynesian tattooing, but the Polynesian always spoke to me because it told a story. And I was like, that's what I want, I want to tell my story. And after I got the Polynesian tattoos, I actually had people write me when they saw them on YouTube and say, I can read your story, I know what they say, the tattoo artist did a pretty good job. So. I told him the story, he put it together, and then he made this stencil. Now, you can see these pieces right here, which are the arrowheads, and they're the spearheads, and they're actually going up in this direction. That means you're a warrior who fights and usually wins your battles, okay? The shark's teeth, here. I'm being chased by something consistently. Like, when I turn around, it's there chasing me. That stands for my addiction. The chevrons, meaning always moving forward. We have the, um, let's see, the birds up here. You can see the birds, the little birds up here. It's more shark's teeth, the birds. The birds mean that you've gone away from your home, but you can always find your way, like how they fly south for the winter and come back. So basically, I left Rhode Island, but I can always go back because it's my home, but I've gone away from my home. And let's see, so that's the, those, the chevrons. There's more of the shark's teeth, and you can see more of the shark's teeth in here, more of the chevrons. A lot of it is very repetitive. Um, that's on there over and over again. So I went from that piece to this piece on this shoulder here. Let me see if we can get it. So you have more of the shark's teeth. The bear claws ferociously fights. That's what that means. Um, you have more of the, um, where are the spearheads on there? The spears going up in the same direction like that. More of the chevrons. So a lot of it is very repetitive for what it's at. The, uh, the flags, I stake my claim where I live now. That's what the flags are for. Um, and as you go down towards the sleeve into the arm, you see more of the shark's teeth, the basket weaving, which means family. That's what that stands for. More of the shark's teeth, the fish on the actual inside of my arm here. You can see that here. Those fish mean to live and prosper. More shark's teeth. I mean, like I said, a lot of it's repetitive. More of the basket weaving in the bottom. I really like the way the bottom of this turned out. Like on here, it's probably my favorite part of all these tattoos like that. But a lot of it is repetitive. Now, when you get to the chest piece, the chest piece is a little bit different. The chest, you can see the face here. This is a tiki face. This is actually my own tiki face that my tattoo artist created for me. And on the left side, hand over the heart, the tiki face goes there. It's to protect you and your family against evil spirits. That's what that's there for. 
Now around that you'll see more of the bear claws, more of the chevrons, I mean always moving forward, more of the um, actual, the birds flown away from the home, etc, etc. So a lot of that again is repetitive, but the tiki face is, it's a very spiritual thing. It's, um, like I said, depending on where you put it, like left side, right side, depending on where you put, you know, a lot of like the left arm is supposed to be for you, the right arm is supposed to be for your family, you know, the back, where you put the tattoos themselves have different meanings as opposed to just what they are themselves. And I know that there are multiple meanings for these tattoos. Like some people will look at them and say, no, Jerry, it means this. And other people say, no, Jerry, it does mean that. When I was getting the 5% tattoo on my arm here, the tattoo artist was telling me in Vegas, he's like, you know, I got these tattoos. He goes, and to me, I got them because of this. He goes, and really, they wind up being some kind of gang tattoo somewhere else. He goes, and, you know, I went out there and they were like, yo, what the fuck are you with this gang? He's like, no, it means this. And they were like, no, it means that. And, you know, it's kind of fucked up. I had people <clears throat> contact me right away when I get everything done. And they were like, you know, I can read your, your, um, your tattoos. The artist did a good job. Thank you for promoting the Polynesian culture because you're not Polynesian. And then I had other people say, if you ever come to Hawaii, I'll smash your face in with a fucking hammer because you have those tattoos. Like there's two, opp like, two opposite ends of the spectrum. And I, you know, I look back and I'm like, you know what? The Japanese style didn't speak to me. You know, new wave style didn't speak to me. Um, the, geom the sacred geometry didn't speak to me. The Polynesian spoke to me for some reason. When I looked at it, I was like that, the way the symmetry is, the way it takes your body, the repetitiveness, the telling of the story, all of that spoke to me. And I do look at it as not something that's disrespectful because I'm not Polynesian. It's something that I do look at and say, this is not just interesting. It's a beautiful work of art by this culture. And I'm proud to have it on my body. And, you know, people are always going to be pissed off. You know, if you want to be pissed off and be a hater, that's just how you're going to be in your life. But, you know, I think a lot of people actually understand, like, you know, nowadays, <clears throat> many people have tattoos, Japanese style, they're not Japanese. You know, and I have a Portuguese tattoo on my hand here. You know, I am Portuguese, but if someone else has a Portuguese tattoo, I'm not going to be mad at them if they're not Portuguese. I have a shamrock on my elbow because I'm Irish. You know, someone else may have a shamrock because they like the fucking Boston Celtics. Like, what the fuck? You know, like, I don't know. I think some people just want to be pissed off to be pissed off. But I basically got all of this stuff done within a, a year's time. Um, every other week I was going to get something done. And it was, you know, the first one was actually stenciled on by, you know, a, a piece of paper with a stencil. The chest and this arm, everything on this arm and everything on this arm was actually stenciled directly on with a Sharpie. You know, like Carly actually had to go like underneath things. And he actually made a line around these things. You can see this, you know, each tattoo is actually separated by some space. So he actually did something called a bloodline. You can see like the flame, how there's like a, a, almost like a halo like effect around the flame that goes around all the different tattoos. So it actually looks like the, the Polynesian goes behind it to cause separation from one tattoo to the other and not make them all blur together and just kind of like make a big mess. So, you know, when you first look at me, you may not be able to tell everything and say, okay, I know exactly what's on there. But as you get closer, you can actually see that everything is separated and very symmetrical. And the lines are very sharp and very, very like dark, very black. Like the ink is very, very black that's in there. And uh, the X is for straight edge. I don't know if I talked about that one before because I've been straight edge for quite a long time now. But I like the way they turned out. You know, I definitely understand that they're very powerful symbols. And they're very ancient, powerful symbols that the culture loves. And I understand that and respect that. And um, like I said, when Carly was actually tattooing it, we were talking about Polynesian. I had seen one guy had Polynesian with red in it. And, um, you know, I asked him about it. I said, it looks kind of neat. What about this? And he said, flat out, he said, you know what? Let's stick to the traditional Polynesian. He's like, because honestly, I don't feel right doing the Polynesian tattoo with the red, which is not traditional. He's like, I feel like I'm disrespecting the culture by changing what they have and modernizing it. And I'd really like to stick with this. What do you think? And when he said that, I said, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Let's stick with the traditional and we'll go that route. So that is the story of my newer tattoos. They aren't just thrown on there to be thrown on there. They do tell the story. They were thought out. They were planned out. They were actually, you know, kind of literally drawn on my body to take the shape of my muscles and stuff. And I'm super happy with them. So guys, all I can say is if you want to get a tattoo, make sure you want it obviously because it's there for good unless you do that fucking laser shit. But whatever a tattoo means to you is what it means. Don't get a tattoo based on, or don't get one or not get one based on what someone else is going to say or think because it's your body. You know, when I walk into a room now or I walk out on the beach or the pool or something and people kind of look, you know, the first glance they kind of go, oh, he's heavily tattooed. And the second glance they start to go, Wow, everything is so symmetrical and sharp. It's not like, 
you know, it was just thrown on there. Obviously, it was planned out. And then they start to ask questions, which is cool. When they start to ask questions, you get to tell them about yourself, interact with them, and that's how you impact people's lives. So, biosetraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. But don't fight. www.biosetraining.com is the blog. It's the My Tattoo Bicep. And we're...